everybody, today I am back trying three different workouts from the very popular Kayla Atsinas. Kayla is known for her 28 minute BBG workouts or bikini body guide workouts, which are now all listed in the Sweat app. Now instead of trying the Sweat app today, I decided to try the free workbook that you get when you subscribe on her website. Within that free workbook, you do get three different workouts, all for different body parts. We're gonna see abs, legs, and arms. Let me know in the comments below if you have ever tried one of Kayla's workouts, and let's hop in. The first workout that I tried was the leg workout. Within this workout, we saw jump squats, weighted walking lunges, sumo squats, weighted step ups, scissor kicks, bench jumps, knee ups, and weighted sumo squats on a bench. To be honest, I didn't have an issue with any of the exercises that she was having us do. I thought they were very functional. Most of them were very easy to do at home, except for whatever the fuck I was trying to do by standing on two different benches here, AKA my ottoman and my couch. <laughs> it's two different heights. <laughs> okay, you get it. <laughs> but pretty much everything in this could be done at home or could be modified very easily to also do at home. Now something that I love within Kayla's workout is that she added in scissor kicks into this work set. Most people would think of this as a core move and it definitely is a core exercise, but you are also working through your legs. So if anything, I thought this was a really smart move to program in, especially where she did, because it kind of gives you a break out of these total body leg movements and gives you a little bit of a recovery. It really does break down this idea that we need to isolate body parts to work them rather than working the whole body together as a unit. So overall for this first workout, I give it A+. The second workout I did was for the arms. Now one of the things that I love about Kayla's workout for the arms and the things that really changed my body was all of the plank work that was involved. A lot of people think that the only way to work your arms is by doing isolated arm movements with dumbbells and it is definitely not true. One of the biggest ways that I saw results with my arms was from doing a lot of different plank work. So I love that she incorporated mostly plank work into a lot of this workout and a lot of these movements like I said before ended up being a total body movement. So Kayla really programmed a routine here that is not only effective but oh my god this was hard. Oh, it's a lot of push-ups. It's a lot of push-ups. So my only complaint with the programming was in the second circuit you are on your hands supporting yourself with your shoulders for a long time i mean first you're seeing mountain climbers then you're going into those she calls them commandos i call them up downs and then you're going right into those in out push-ups it's just a lot of reps it just if it were me i probably would have programmed something in between the mountain climbers and the push-ups just to like give you a little bit of a break. Because in my opinion, doing 100 reps of an exercise on your hands is a little bit too much for me, but that's just me. So I give this workout an A minus. And then our third workout was the ab workout. You guys already know this about me if you have watched this video right up here, but I'm very, very picky about the core workouts and the ab workouts that I do. I'm not a fan of the traditional crunching motion. I just think that it puts a lot of pressure on your lumbar spine. I think that people do it wrong, to be honest. And I just think that there are more effective ways to train your core, especially in the way that we need to use our core as a stabilizer for everyday life. So. That's how I feel about ab workouts or core workouts. So I was excited and tentative to jump into this one. Some of the things we saw were ab bikes, weighted bent leg jackknifes, raised leg sit up and twist, bent leg sit ups, mountain climbers, straight leg raises on the bench, toe taps, and then a plank. So we definitely did see a good deal of crunching movement in this. Look, I'm not saying that like I never do anything that is a crunching movement, but I also don't rely solely on those because I also know that it's a little bit more of like a isolated active recovery kind of move rather than something that should be the foundation of your core workouts. So a few of the moves that I did have a little bit of an issue with, the ab bikes. This move is meant to target the obliques. I think that, especially in the way that Kayla has it demonstrated on here, I think that her knees are coming in too far, so a lot of my clients would actually start pulling with their hip flexors instead of their obliques. I think that a lot of people will start to twist from their lumbar spine 
spine instead of their thoracic. A lot of people have an issue with that, with keeping their hips in one place. So you'll start to see a big issue with that. So instead to target the obliques from this supine position, I would prefer to do something like a single arm dead bug where you have a weight above your head, you're extending one leg out, the opposite arm out at a time. And because you're changing your center of gravity on one part of your body, you're actually then forced to use your oblique to keep yourself stable. So I would rather see something like that. Another move I had an issue with was the weighted bent leg jackknife. Again, the issue with the knees coming in past the hips, you're gonna start using your hip flexors to get through the motion once your abs fatigue. And you know, I think there's something to be said about lengthening the abdominals to build them rather than crunching them. I just think that not only it's safer, but it's also gonna help us get out of this rounded position that we're so prone to every day. So instead, what I would have done here, I would have loved to see like leg lowers just from a laying down position. Um, I think that's just as effective. And then the last one that I kind of raise an issue with is the toe taps. Look, I'm tentative to say this because I do these in my class. But a lot of times when I do these, these are like pure active recovery. I kind of think it's a filler move. Again, there's just so many things that are more effective in the long run. So when I'm programming the toe taps, they're just filler. So for anyone who takes my class, Toe taps are a filler move, everybody. So I actually would have liked to see more like a Pilates 100 here. You are working from a little bit more of a lengthened position and people can always rest their head down if they need to, but you're kind of frozen in one almost hollow hold position and I think that's a lot safer to get into. So as far as Kayla's programs, I actually think they're really great. They're fairly simple. She's not trying to reinvent the wheel. She is just smartly piecing things together and making them accessible for everyday people. Her programs are functional, they're full body, and they are hard. Ooh. Ooh. Now, like I said, all of these workouts are also on the Sweat app. You can get seven days free. So definitely check that out if you have not. I will definitely be doing a video all about that when I finally try it. Let me know if you guys have actually tried it below in the comments. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys all soon.